Hey, everybody, John Granado from the bench. Mornings on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5, and that's A.J. Hoffman. He's on the Blitz afternoons in 97.5 and 92.5. Hit subscribe if you haven't yet because you get all of our content here at SportsMap HOU. Ken Hoffman, who writes for SportsMap HOU, by the way, he wrote a piece on the Texans this week. In the article, he quoted a team official that told him six or seven years ago the Texans had more people on their waiting list than the Astros and Rockets had actual season ticket holders. A friend of Ken's joined the waiting list three years ago. He was told he was 26,000 back. Then last year, he was just 20,000 back. This year, they called him, and he denied. He declined his tickets. What does that say about the Cal McNair reign? After just a couple of years, he's allowed it to become so toxic. Not only did fans stop buying season tickets, but some believe... I mean, people actually believe that the team was framing Deshaun Watson. That's how bad people, that's what this organization is thought of. When people are willing to just cut their losses on on PSLs, that, that says a lot. Like, guys, who, yeah, if you're like, well, yeah, I did pay all that money up front, but... Do I want to keep throwing bad money? It it, it doesn't make sense. I, so, did, I, I, I I've been a season ticket holder from the beginning. I paid my PSL. I'm not doing. I just got a call from them this morning asking me to buy. I'm no. To, I'm no. Stop calling me. I'm not buying my season tickets. You can have the PSL. I'll take the loss. I'm doing it, AJ. I'm done with this organization. Just done. I, I, I'll, I'll watch them on TV until the rule comes back where if you don't have a sellout, you can't watch them anymore. Then then we're going to be screwed. Then we're going to be screwed. I, I think that's how a lot of people are thinking. I don't think that's unusual. but I, I, And I think that it's, gonna, it's just going to get worse. I think the Texans are going to have to change their business model. I don't think PSLs are going to work anymore to get people to buy season tickets. I, I don't think you're going to convince someone, hey – you want to buy season tickets? If you do, you got to buy this. People are just going to say no. I think that they are going to have to change the way they do season tickets. Uh, I think you're going to start seeing, you know, ticket gimmicks, which they've never had to do. I think you're going to start seeing cheap tickets come up. Uh, you're going to start seeing family four packs, a dollar hot dogs, whatever. You're going to see things like that because. That's what this organization has become. They've become the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's what they are now. They're going to start tarping the upper deck like Jacksonville. They, it, it, it may come so that they sell out. But you don't have to sell out anymore for it to be uh, seen on television. So we'll see if that rule comes back. Uh, but it, it's not in place anymore. Now, they've done an unbelievable job. Texans have done just an unbelievable job of losing fans. I mean, they trading away all their stars, losing games, just Deshaun Watson, Cal McNair opening his mouth, everything. Now, winning cures everything. Winning cures everything. Do you think, though, that with the Jack Easterby situation, the Cal McNair situation, how, how, how little – I've never seen an owner that is thought of as little as Cal McNair. It's, it's unbelievable the things that we say about him right on our air. It's unbelievable that how, 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 how the lack of respect for this owner – even winning, though, do you think that people will come back to this team? I think you could look at what the Knicks are doing. The, I mean, the New York Knicks have a, a a terrible owner, a guy who before Cal McNair existed was considered the worst owner in sports. They're coming off their most successful year in a long time, and Madison Square Garden was rocking. Now, mind you, the Knicks are a historic franchise. They've got a history that the Texans can't touch. But I do believe once you're winning games, people will forget about who the owner is. They get past it. They move on, yeah. and they'll they'll come watch a winning team. The problem is, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they're going to luck box their way into being a winner anytime soon. And it may it may you know just destroy the business so badly in the in the time being, like in the time it takes to become a winner, that they lose that thing altogether. They lose their heart, their their fan base well, that they've built. Well, this was the only organization in this city that didn't have to win to fill the house. Right. right? The Rockets have to win to fill the house. The Astros have to win to fill the house. The Texans never did. They didn't have to do anything. They filled the house, period, exclamation point. Those days are over now, though. So they have got to win. So it's imperative that, that Casario does his job and does his job well. It, this rebuild is going to be because of the draft picks and everything else. It's going to be a while. It is going to be a while before we have another waiting list. I'm putting at least a waiting list. I'm putting at least eight years on it. I think that's probably about right because I don't think this team can can really even be looked at as a team that compete that can compete until three five years down the road from now. So 
yeah, I, I'd say it would take that long to build up a list again. It's it's it, people are not going to just you know sheep to the slaughter anymore. They're not just going to zombie walk into that st- that stadium and just go watch their team get their head caved in. I think people are done with it. Right. Uh, Jamie Roots had the easiest job in the city, and now Greg Grissom has the hardest job. Yep. <laughs> it's a it's amazing how that turned around. 